Hey guys, this is Eric Young, and you're listening to Book in the Territory. Hey, this is Ring of Honor Superstar Donovan Dijak, and you're listening to Booking the Territory Pro Wrestling Podcast. This is a one-man gang. You're listening to Booking the Territory Pro Wrestling Podcast. This is Booking the Territory, a pro wrestling podcast hosted by Mike Mills, part Body Harper from Wildcat Sports and Entertainment, and the mentally irregular Doc Turner. This podcast is a mix of your topics and thoughts in the world of pro wrestling, along with interviews and discussions with current independent stars and your favorite stars from the past. And now, here's your host, Mike Mills. Okay, everybody, thanks for tuning in to this week's YouTube edition of Booking the Territory Pro Wrestling Podcast. And this week, we got a little bit of a special for you. Uh, back in June of 2016, I was joined by the OG Kevin Gill himself. Kevin Gill joined me for, uh, for our regular show that airs each and every week on uh, podbean.com, mikemills.podbean.com, booking the territory. Kevin was a guest. This was probably a month or so after he had interviewed Teddy Hart on his show, the Kevin Gill Show. And Kevin sat w- sat down with me for about an hour, joined us, and it was a great discussion, man. Kevin's a great dude, great guest, runs a great podcast, so check him out sometime. Kevin, The Kevin Gill Show, I think you can get there at kevingillshow.com, I believe is what it is. So uh, this is uh, Kevin and I... Just kicking back, talking about podcasts, and talking about a number of different topics. So enjoy it. And hey, don't forget, if you like this uh, episode, go on to our, go download our audio shows. It's on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, TuneIn Radio. If you just search "Book in the Territory" or look at the links in the comment, not in the comment section, in the description section below, you can find most of our audio links there. Our Pro Wrestling Tea Store. Follow us on on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and I post everything there as well. But, again, this is Kevin Gill from June of 2016 on Booking the Territory Pro Wrestling Podcast. What's going on, man? Just kicking it, man, Sunday, Sunday style. Just wake up slowly, eat something, and uh, <laughs> send a bunch of messages, and then here I am. <laughs> I hear you. Hey, man, I appreciate you doing this, man. I always tell the guys whenever I do, uh, you know, recordings, I'm like, the most valuable thing we got is time. So uh, I tell people all the time, man, I appreciate that time, man, because well, uh, that's the one thing you can't ever get back. Amen, brother, like Flavor Flav taught us. <laughs> yeah, man. No, it's true, and, though, man. It, you can't put a price on time, man. People don't realize that. I mean, you start to realize it as you get older, but it's like, damn, you know, time is so valuable. It's it, it's it's hard to really explain and articulate how valuable it is a lot of time. Amen, brother. And I appreciate your time. You know what I mean? You have stuff you could be doing, and you're here giving me an opportunity to talk to people. You know what I mean? So, hey, I hear you, man. I think it's all good. <laughs> well, look, man, I'm a – honestly, man, like, um, so – Shining Wizards, I think, uh, you know, I've been doing my show. My show, we about to, well, by the time this airs, we would have hit our one-year anniversary. And we've had on, yeah, I've had on One Man Gang. I've had on Donovan Dijak. I've had on, let's see, Beer City Bruiser. I can't even think of a, Eric Young recently, we had him on. So, uh, you know, I'm like, uh, you know, I, I'm just finding my way in this thing. And and uh, I remember I was listening to Shining Wizards, I think it was, and I, and they mentioned your show. So I was like, uh, I was like, let me let me give you know, let me give it a let me give it a listen. So I started listening. And I put a couple of my friends on it, and then I had other friends in in, in the business and stuff that had I, actually. We have a mutual friend you might not even know about, uh, Luke Hawks. Oh, dope, uh, dope. Yeah, he's the man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Luke, I'm from New Orleans, so Luke and I know each other from a long time ago, indie on the indie scene. So, uh, so man, um, you know, I so I had heard about you from that. So I started listening, like, man, I was like, you know, Kevin got a nice little show, man, nice little, you know, it's kind of like Colts, yeah, but it's it's not really. I mean, I, you know, I don't want to say yours is like here because it's it's different. I mean, you because you have on more than just wrestling, right, right. I, right. I I think that's where I get to be different from. I mean, because I'm very much inspired by Colt Show and right. like his rule, you know, his rules, so to speak, like in person interviews. These lo- you know long form interviews. I go longer than he does, and and then yeah, like that. I think that's where mine gets different is that there's all these musicians and stuff on it too, you know. And the music episodes do really good, you know. Right. So there you go. It's like so so you kind of reach more than just one genre of I guess you know people that are out there. So you you reach the musical, um, and then you have different forms of musical stuff too. Because I mean, like you you'll have 
you have rap and then you you also have rock. I mean, it's just it's a it's a menagerie. So it's like a good thing, man. So you're kind of like broad. And um, you know, it's funny. I heard you say. I think it was on. I think it was on this week's episode. You were talking about uh, you know, Colt basically inspired you, and it was a, uh, it was an honor to be on his show. Fuck yeah! I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask you about that because man, I've been, I've, I've listened to Colt for a long time, man. Colt, Colt introduces the the wrestling community, and there's so many people that you never hear of that I think it's that's just a wonderful part of it. Not just the discussion, but a mere fact that you hear people. So I wanted you to talk about how, you know. How you you viewed Colt from the get go? Maybe kind of inspired you from the start to 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 launch your product, which is doing really good. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Well, Colt is someone who you know he he's an icon. He's an icon in in wrestling, and he's he's a trailblazer in podcasting. And I was I was already a fan of his of his wrestling work, and um, I would always hear so much about him. And then I got to to meet him and see him wrestle, and uh, I started listening to the podcast right before I did. And I had never listened to a podcast before, and I was like, oh, you know, podcast like what. <laughs> kind of like, what is it? And, or who cares? Like, you know what I mean? I'm busy enough. Like, right. I want to listen to some guy talk. And you know how it was in the earlier days of podcasting, there was a lot of people that would just have like a bad, you know, bad sound and bad questions. You know what I mean? And you're like, kind of yeah. like, uh, so <laughs> the Kabata thing was just magical to me. You know what I mean? What, what, uh, how interesting it was. And as soon as I started listening, cause at first, of course you want to listen to people you're already a fan of, but then, right the magic of it is the people that you don't know and that they have an interesting story. And that's kind of a huge part of my show is just the story, the journey, like even my interviews with musicians and stuff, you don't have to be a fan of that band. The interview isn't about on this song, on the third lyric, when you say this, like it's much more, it's life, it's the journey. And the fact that they have this interesting gig or, you know, and we tie it all together too with that positive mental attitude. But, but the thing is from being a fan of cult and meeting them and seeing them work, to then I've worked alongside him in, in Juggalo Championship Wrestling for a lot of years now, and uh, he's just the man, you know what I mean? So it's an honor to call him a, a friend, an inspiration, a, a co-worker, and, uh, and all that, you know what I mean? And to me, uh, he was very helpful to me when I started my podcast, and, you know, I'm paying dues, grinding it out for a couple of years on my third year now of episodes, and uh, I finally got my, my cabana shot, you know what I mean? So it feels like I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm legit now. Between that and the Young Bucks documentary, I feel like I got to be getting over <laughs> with the internet yeah. community, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I mean, you are, man. And I think, you know, I'm starting to see, like, I remember starting it and, um, and like, starting mine, I was like, I was like, man, you know, you got to do something to make it different, but you also have to make it to where people want to listen because it's uh, – it, it like you know mine's all about wrestling i don't do any music part of it but you gotta it, there's gotta be something that people can sink their teeth into where they want to listen to it and and yeah that's like when you describe you know what you what you saw from colt is a perfect example of good podcasting and that's what you do except you go a little step further that you know he's not intending to do because because he's got the, the wrestling audience you go with the you know the music and wrestling so i thought that was i i, I like the way you do that and and that brings people in and you're right man one of the things i did notice and and as i brought on like indie guys that i've known you know for years and stuff i will get feedback from listeners on twitter they go hey man i didn't know who this guy was but man it was he had a cool little story you know like right. not even wrestling like not even wrestling as a related. human like, being and it's like you're sitting right. down having that conversation like you're it's like driving down the road with somebody or whatever, somebody cool, somebody that you want to talk to. You know what I mean? Right. Right. It like, like I'll give you an example. Like I heard you, I've actually heard you uh, a couple of times. Like one of the things I'm not a gamer anymore, man, I got I, wife and kids and I just don't have time for it. it. Not like I used to, you know, full-time job, but like, I was like, damn, Kevin used to, used to be in a video game. Like he, he created them. I was like, that's kind of cool. So like you hear things like that, and it makes you want to get to know more about the person. And you're right; it's just one of those things that triggers and go, "Man, I, that, that dude's got a nice little story, nice little history." I mean, it goes to show you we all got a story, right? Right. The the craziest thing for me is, um, and it's crazy in a good way, is like, you know, a lot of juggalos listen to my show. Excuse me. <clears throat> no, no problem. And I'll have these juggalos come up to me and be like, "Man, like I've been a juggalo for 15 years." And I heard this guy, you know, whether it's John Joseph or Craig from Sick of It All or Toby from H2O, I hear these people on your podcast and they sound so cool and I'm into what they're talking about. I started listening to their records. They're fucking amazing. 
and I just <laughs> saw them. I and I went and saw them play like two weeks ago because of your show. And that to yeah. me is the most amazing thing that people can get turned on to new experiences. Like I want the music fans to understand how similar the life of a wrestler and a musician is and, and, and their journeys and their struggles, their ups, their downs, they're, they're all of it. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and that's what I love. You know, there's a, a, a Vampiro interview I did. I did a two parter with him, but part one, it's all about punk rock and his falling in love with music and growing up and running away. And, but the particular bands, the magazines, the songs, you know, like, so it's, it's like a really a punk rock episode with a wrestler. You know what I mean? I mean we get into a WCW yeah. story or two. You know what I mean? But it's it's yes. a punk rock journey for Vampiro. And a, a lot of people on the music side then listen to that and they're like, fuck, man, this is amazing. You know? So right. it, it's just it's it's cool for me. And I grew up, I'm a, I'm a lifelong Howard Stern listener. You know what I mean? So he's like mm-hmm. the ultimate interviewer. So I feel like um, listening to him. Working with ICP, like I, I've been on their radio programs and other stuff with them and ICP theater and like just working with all these people, it really lets me develop my chops. You know what I mean? Instead of developing yeah. in a bubble, I'm getting to work alongside not just interviewing them, but like doing commentary with Matt Stryker or MVP or whatever. It, it's just it's a really cool, um, cool thing. And it, it helps get me out there, too. It lets people know, like, wow, this KG guy, he does commentary. Oh, KG does this. Maybe I should have him yep. do commentary on my uh, all women's Lucha Libre pay-per-view, like the one I'm doing on uh, Fight TV here from San Francisco for Pro Wrestling Revolution. You know what I mean? To throw in yeah. a plug, 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 plug. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Hey, get them in. Get them in. Get them in. That's, that's part of doing this, right? <laughs> right. You got to get them in, man. You got to get them in. Man, I, I had a that teacher a long time ago used to always tell me, you, you ain't going to sell yourself. Ain't nobody going to do it. So, hey, man, get get the plugs in and, and sell what you got going on. Ain't no doubt about that. A great, hey, you said you, one thing, I, go, go ahead. One thing I, I'd like to share with you is uh, – a couple of times I got to work with the great uh, Roddy Piper, rest in peace. And uh, yeah. one time he was doing a surprise appearance at this pro wrestling film festival that me and uh, Jake rocks off and Mike from pro wrestling insider put together a few years ago in New York city. And he was going to be the surprise like speaker, like and do all the stuff signing all this, but it was totally a surprise. So he just came out before his movie, but I'm out there doing stuff on stage and then he's going to interrupt me, you know? So I'm to- yeah. I'm talking with him in the back about it, and then you know whatever we're going about our de- our time, and then right before we go, he grabs me and he's like, "Listen, because uh, he was planning on uh, kind of doing some uh, like kind of confronting the director on stage at the film festival mm-hmm. about shortcomings in the film, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it was yeah. it was going to be like a hot topic, and he wanted it filmed and put out and everything, and he's like pulls me aside and he's like, "Hey, when you go out there, man, this is your thing." You know what I mean? I'm going to put a little shine on it, but it's your thing. He's like, you put yourself over. He goes, mm. the more you say your name, the more you say who you are, put over who you are. This is your time. He goes, even when we do the live Piper's Pit with you hosting it, you're a part of this. You and me are doing this. Yeah. So you get what you can out of this, brother. And that's with that's with me telling you that, you know? And Though that kind of empowerment, I didn't go out there and say my name 10,000 times, but right, right. just knowing that it's like, all right, cool. Roddy's saying like, brother, you and me are going to do this together. Don't think of me as some big thing. You, you and I are the same thing. And please get your stuff in and get yourself over because you can get more over because I'm here with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, that that that's like a really valuable and honorable thing, you know? Yeah. From Piper? Heck Yeah. That's a hell of a thing, man. To hear that from a guy like that who's, I mean, let, what had he not done? I, I, mean, I know. You know. I mean, really. It's like, it's like, damn. You sit there and you just absorb it like, all right. I mean, you're looking. Because, I mean, he's a legend. Come on. I mean, it, it, beyond. Piper. Yeah, like just uh, beyond. Just, you know, people, everyone talks about Hulkamania, but there's no Hulkamania without Roddy Piper. We had a conversation on my show about that uh, once. Uh, the guy who trained me, uh, he's actually from California, a year, years ago, uh, Rod Price. He worked in Global. Um, and I, I haven't wrestled in, in a number of years. But uh, he uh, he shot a scene with Piper uh, for Walker, Texas Ranger years ago um, when Piper was on that show. And he he raved about how 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 how, uh, how Piper was. He's like, man, Piper was a, just the coolest, most down-to-earth guy Kind of everything you're saying right now. Just just raved about him. Uh, 
it was it was cool just hearing his story and 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 his scene that he shot with one small wrestling scene he shot on Walker Texas Ranger with uh with Roddy Piper back in the uh, day. Another time, uh, the first time I ever worked with Piper was at the the gathering of the Juggalos, and uh, there was going to be a live Piper's Pit with Scott Demore. Scott Demore is going to you know run down Roddy Piper, run down the gathering, run down all kinds of shit, and then Piper's going to snap, and then it turns into like you know like a one minute match, and then Piper gets him in a sleeper. So. I'm a ref at this time, and I'm uh, I'm just standing in the back where I'm supposed to be in my gear, waiting for you know the show. Right. And Piper comes over, and you know how it is. You just see him coming over, and it's like, wow, here comes Roddy Piper, you know. And you just yeah. figure he's going, you know, past me to go do whatever. And he comes, right. and I'm just standing there by myself doing nothing. And he's just like, excuse me, can I please talk to you for a minute? And it's like, oh, of course. He's like, would you <laughs> would you mind coming with me? I'm like, oh, absolutely. You know, I'm already walking as I'm talking. Like, yep, boom. <laughs> right. So I walk, and then he brings me over, and there's a whole group of people, like everyone who's involved in this uh, thing he's doing. And and then, so he just walks me into this circle, and then he goes, okay. And then he just kind of runs through everything that's going to happen to everybody there. And uh, I'm just listening intently because I'm like, well, one, he brought me over here for a reason. Two, he's something, some kind of question or something is going to come out of this. So I just want to be super tuned in on every word that he's saying. <laughs> right, right. So he's like, boom, 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 boom. And then he just turns to me. And that's when you come through the curtain. And then he leans real close and grabs my shoulder. And he's like, uh, what do you say? Uh, it's real easy to be late for this one. But uh, it's impossible to be too early. And then he squeezes my arm and he's just like, don't be late. <laughs> you know, that's awesome. And uh, but that was that's all the information. I, I I got it now. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm at the curtain now. They're doing the thing. And uh, it's actually the scene is captured in the uh, family underground, the uh, insane clown posse gathering the juggalos documentary that's up on Netflix and all that. But okay. uh, the, the scene is there and uh, I'm crouched down at the gorilla position, watching through the curtain, like in the, like almost a sprinter stance, like just ready to sp hit that curtain the second it starts to go where it's supposed to go. <laughs> and uh, right. and then it just hits. And I, I ran down there, did the thing and, uh, you know, put the more out, raised Piper's arm. And uh, it was just such an incredible moment. Like, you know, the guy's a childhood hero of mine and, and just one of the greatest legends uh, of all time. I don't think there'll ever be uh, another Roddy Piper, you know? There won't. You can't replicate that in, in, at all. And you said it. I've said it a million times on my show over the uh, over the last year. There, There's no Hulkamania without that guy. No way, brother. That guy is equally as important, if not more important, in that era 100%. of time. A million I mean, percent. You can't. I mean, you can't. It, it's like. Like we talked about, you know, and somebody gives you their time, it's it's uh, you can't put a value on it. You cannot put a value on what he did. Um, and I wasn't, I was a, I grew up in the mid south territory, sure, in the in the late seventies, early eighties. So, I saw the WWF at the time once the the talent was taken to go up to you know up to WWF. But I I did mid eighties is when I you know started tuning in more to WWF. But there's there's no Hulkamania without that guy. That guy that guy made it. I mean, anybody who doesn't realize that, they're just – they got blinders on. And he was I mean, he was like the original bad guy that everybody loved, you know? I mean, right, they hated him right. for a long – you know, the through the snooka time and all that. I mean, he was legit hated. But by the time he got to attacking Hogan and stuff, people were with it. You know what I mean? Like, even, oh, yeah, even as yeah. a child, I, I switched to Piper's side, you know? <laughs> yeah, I wanna I wanna say I did too at some point, but by, by the time we started getting into the later eighties, I was like, nah, this guy's cool. I mean, it's not it's not it's not cool for me to hate him anymore. He's he's getting to the point where he's cool. So. And, and if anyone yeah, nah, most if, definitely if anyone hasn't seen the movie They Live, everyone who's listening to this right now should have seen this movie at least oh, five yeah. times. But if you have yeah. not seen They Live, seriously, just go out of your way and see They Live. Directed by John Carpenter, starring Roddy Piper, the greatest film starring a pro wrestler. Ever, I will never forget when I was sitting. I was at my dad's house as a kid when he was watching that movie, and I'm a big wrestling fan, right? So he's watching movie, like, what is he watching, you know? And I see Piper come on the screen, and it's probably midway through, and I'm like, I looked at my dad, like, that's Roddy Piper. He's like, yeah, it is. And I just sat down, watched it. I saw the half of it, and I'll never forget. Ever since then, if I'm flipping through the channels, that movie's on, I'll stop and watch it. 
I mean, he's Piper, man. Come on, he lives forever, dude. He's it. It was it was like you said, a good wrestling movie. Uh, he was one of the first ones that did that too, wasn't he? He's the most successful of that, and you know, for that period of time and like twenty years around it, basically. You yeah, know what I mean, like yeah. uh, there was like some real early movies like Body Slam and. Uh, yeah, that's true. But though you know what I'm saying? The, the, yeah, they weren't they weren't what that was though. Those were like movies that like relied on wrestling and they weren't the greatest movies but because they had wrestling in it it was like oh this is cool, but they yeah. live is like a movie. You know what I mean? And it's it's iconic and its message is is more relevant today even than it was at the time. It's way ahead of its time. Yeah, it's going to it's going to it's going to live on. It's going to live on forever, that's for sure. Um hey, I got to ask you, dude. So I've listened to God, I've, I, I, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you I've listened to every single one of your episodes, but it's it's close to it. But I will say this. Recently, I was listening to the Teddy Hart episode, <laughs> which, 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 KG, I know you've gotten tons of feedback on. <laughs> so before you start talking, I just got to say this. You are always good about just going with the flow when you have a guy on. You can tell you don't have a set agenda, which is one of the things I actually model for mine when I'm talking to guys. I don't want to have just this, you know, boom, 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 we got to hit all this. I want it to flow, sound like a real conversation. You are always good about going with the flow, and then you're always good about asking follow-up questions when the opportunity to r- arises and whatnot. With the Teddy Hart episode, what was so awesome, Cause you just let Teddy just go. When <laughs> Teddy was, Teddy is giving some of the best audio podcasts, and you will ever hear. <laughs> what is going through your mind? Cause I could tell a couple of times you're like, you, I can hear the wheels in your head as you're about to ask a follow up, and it's like, whoa, he just went to something completely different that I just got to roll with. Here. Yeah, so, I can't uh, stop it. Right? It's <laughs> it's it, as good as the follow up question might have been. Uh, yeah, I, I think you just can't attempt to stop that forward momentum. And it, I mean, Teddy would have no problem recovering and going right on. Right. But you know what I mean? It's just, just to let that flow. Yes. Cause the amazing thing about Teddy Hart is that, you know, he does, I think he's a long form speaker. Do you know what I mean? Like he's not a yes. short sentence guy and it may seem crazy, but if you let him go, it starts off and it maybe sounds crazy. And then in the middle, it sounds reasonable, but by the end it all comes together and it's like, Oh, he's making this really giant point over like a 10 minute period. So if you ask right. him a lot of follow-up questions in the short term, I don't, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I, yeah. what's going through my mind is, yeah, I, I'm such a fan of Teddy Hart. You know what I mean? And uh, I've always wanted to, to have him on. Uh, I've, yeah, I think he's fascinating. You know what I mean? He's obviously, oh, yeah. you know, all the things I said, controversial, whatever. But uh, the whole thing is just so crazy because um, and I I forgot to mention this on the uh, on the intro of the episode, too. But he uh, I forget what it was now. It's he showed up to do the interview. I I, I don't know if it was a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, but it was one of those cars that's just not a regular car. Like it's not in the regular range of automobiles. You know what I'm saying? It's like into the multiple six figure type super vehicles. And he shows up and he's always got like a hottie or two or three like valets with him, but they're dressed in like valet gear, like hot, all hotted out, like to the millionth power and a group of guys wearing like, like team Taz style, you know, but wearing old Teddy Hart ring jackets and ring pants and all this stuff. And then there's Teddy Hart with the diamond medallion on and all this shit. And then they're all holding these giant cats. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) And right. this is at a, a like a um, a reasonably you know m- reasonably uh, not high end hotel but like a very nice hotel like yeah, the Marriott yeah, yeah. or some shit you know right so they obviously stand the fuck out you know and then we're sitting there <laughs> doing the interview and the uh, only the girl and one of the cats and Teddy and me and Conan <laughs> are there for this interview and uh, at one point while Teddy's talking the girl is standing holding the microphone for him, like, like a human microphone stand. And he's just sitting there talking like, you know, just with his hands, you know, ba, 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 right. and this and that. And the girl held the mic for like at least 25 minutes. You know what I mean? I've never seen anyone do that before. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not one of those things because it's an audio podcast. Correct. You could... <laughs> yeah. It would make great yeah. video, you know? And, and that's the other thing I, I was, as I was sitting there, not just because of that, but I did want to take a picture of that. 
but I also thought that would take it out of the moment. You know what I mean? So, so, it would. so I didn't. You know what I mean? Because right. in other words, we're just ta- you know what I'm saying? Like, so, and yeah, hey, it would have been a cool picture. It might have gone viral. You know what I mean? Teddy would have loved it. But sometimes I just don't want to break certain like walls, almost. You know what I mean? Right. It would it would have gone viral, especially with the feedback and how popular uh, that episode was. I mean, from the stuff I saw on social media with it. So, I, you know, it would have went viral because people would have attached it to the audio. See, it. I guess it was just a matter of timing because Conan came in and sat in for a bunch of that interview. And uh, he got there. He either got yeah. there or left. His timing didn't work around the mic stand part. If he was there for the mic stand part, he would have 100 percent photographed it. You know what I mean? <laughs> that I am sure of. <laughs> my uh one of my co-hosts uh because i got two uh one of them literally i hadn't listened to the episode yet he he walks into my office at work and he goes holy fucking shit and i go what i'm thinking something something at work happened he goes bruh you gotta hit the play button <laughs> on kevin gill and teddy hart right fucking now and i was like I was like, and I look at him like, you know, I I obviously can't see me right now. I look at him like, it's like that. He goes, dude, you and and he and I. That's one thing about what I do is, man, I I will listen to other shows because one, I want to support them, sure. You know, because hey, man, you know, I I know it ain't easy, you know, being somebody who's done this now for a year, and I'm still trying to make my way. Man, we got a small audience. We're we're growing. We got a small audience. I got help from from certain people, but still. So I, I will support, you know, and I'll listen to various shows all the time. But for him, now this dude listens to podcasts all the time. He listens to more than me. For him to come in and go, bruh, hit the fucking <laughs> play button on that shit right now. He goes, it was fucking incredible. He goes, he goes, I can't even um, he goes, I can't put it into words, man. He said this, he said, Teddy just fucking went and just went and went. And you didn't want to stop him. So, and sure enough, when I queued it up, I was like, God damn. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people listen to that episode two or three times just to fully process everything. Dude, I'm he guilty of it. Because he would say something that would make blow your fucking mind, even as yes. someone who knows, you know, knows a lot, knows whatever. He yes. blows your mind and then doesn't even take a breath and then does it again on a different topic and again on a different one and again. Right. You know, uh, he, he it, this is the best way I can explain it. He will blow your mind about a point that will have you cracking up laughing. But and he doesn't blink when he does it, which actually emphasizes it to me more because you're not even you're just like, holy shit, he just said that. And then he's already on to the next thing that you're popping on again. You're, you're fucking <laughs> losing your mind on again. And he does it. Dude, it, this is no joke, man. On my phone, podcasts that I like, that I feel is great content or, or polarizing, whatever you want to call it, I'll save them. That's one of the ones I got saved. Wow. And I ain't deleting it. Because, and, and I've had listeners listeners of our show who have tweeted me and said, man, we're glad you retweeted that because that shit was unreal. Wow. Like, just to listen to that guy go off. And it, like you said, man, it wasn't even anything. I can't even like he was talking about the the thing with the uh the, the chicks with the cats. The, the he goes he goes they come out there with their big fucking tits and they're at the ring with the cats. And you know, <laughs> and dude, it's just funny, man. You, you you're visualizing this again, audio podcast. So you're visualizing what he's talking about, and he's not even blinking, dude. He's just flying through the story, and I'm and that that was one of the points where I'm like I'm sitting there imagining you going. I got a follow up question, but this is too damn good. I got to let this dude just run. Right. And I I had a few questions. I always try to have just a few points I want to touch on, but there wasn't really much to try to to get in because (laughs) you just go, you know, and and the thing is I've watched, you know, there's a lot of Teddy, not a lot, but there's several Teddy Hart interviews out on YouTube and stuff that are really in depth. And uh, yeah. And also a lot of people will point him towards controversial topics only or whatever, and it's like, I'd rather talk to the guy about what he's up to, because, you know, he was just coming off this big feature in Rolling Stone magazine, and he has this stuff going on, and, you know, he's obviously painted somewhat as a pariah in the rest, or whatever you want to say, in the wrestling industry, and I'm only looking at it from the point of view of, he's someone that really loves wrestling, wrestling is his life, he loves it, he's innovative as a performer, he has his own state of mind and outlook, which... You know, I guess depending on your perspective, could be uh, challenging to deal with if you're a booker or an opponent or whatever. But right, right. If you take him at face value, you know he he'll tell you when he fucks up. He'll tell you, you know, he seems to want to do business. You know what I mean? And hey, yeah. God bless him. You know what I mean? He's he's 
wrestling takes all types, you know what I mean? And uh, he's like, yeah. the, he's the spice in the wrestling saute. He is. I, the, the thing that I take from a guy like him that I appreciate is the level he will speak his mind. Because the one thing I found about some people in the wrestling business, they, they really won't say what they really want to say. Right. But like you ain't got you ain't got to worry about that with him. A yeah, guy like him. Like a lot of people, like yeah, riding in the car or sitting at the bar or doing or going out to dinner with somebody is way different than interviewing them because the stuff people will just say in conversation, yeah, is definitely without filter. You know what I mean? But when you're gonna be mm-hmm. put out to the public, you know what I'm saying, especially in today's world and a lot of people have aspirations or currently work with or are in between gigs with major, major entities, you know, and there's some people that just do not give a fuck. Like you said, they're going to, they're going to speak their mind. And, just you know, I, I like to have equal formats, you know, um, I welcome people like, uh, past guests like Finn Balor or Enzo and Cass and Bailey, and mm-hmm. we're going to put over NXT and WWE stuff. You know what I mean? And their stuff that those guys all do is fucking awesome. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. 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 But in other words, I like to let it be equal and open. Like it's not a show that it's about, Oh, it's only about independent wrestling or it's only right. about hardcore wrestling or it's only about punk rock or hardcore or rock or rap or, and right. you know, I, I don't know. I just, and I think it hits a unique niche because uh, a lot of these, a lot of the guests are, are friends of mine. So there's a, a good, a good chemistry, you know what I mean? And a lot of the yeah, guests, there is. if they're not friends of mine, friends of mine are friends of theirs who were like, man, you should do this show. And that's how amazing people like Ron Funches and uh, the comedian Ralphie May, that's how they came to be on the show. And, dude, their knowledge, if you haven't heard the Ron Funches or Ralphie May episodes, they're two of the top comedians in the world. But their knowledge on wrestling is astounding. And when you get a world-class comedian riffing and doing comedy with me, yeah. you know, as the undercard, the host, you know, it's fucking amazing, man. It's it's just it's mind-blowing to be sitting there with these people and have them give you an hour of their fucking time, you know, in person. Yeah. Here I am. It's me, KG. What up? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's and that, that actually that actually goes into the well, I was going to ask you about that. Like, so okay, you're almost 100 deep in at this point, 100 episodes. Um like are those some of the ones and what other ones like stand out to you that you look at and go, man, those were on the money. I mean, we talked about the, the how polarizing Teddy Hart was, but just from like the Funches one and and some of the others, which ones can you look back at and go, hey man, um, do you like tell my audience, hey, check this one out because you will enjoy it because of, well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, to me, it started. The magic was right there with the first episode, man. Andrew W. K. You know, renowned rocker, writer, party, you know, human embodiment mm-hmm. of party, and uh. The idea that I'm, you know, he's a star and I'm not a guy with a, a track record as a podcaster. I'm doing episode one, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah. I asked him and he's like, of course, Kevin, I would love to. Like, here's my schedule. Like, let's make it happen. And uh, and we did, you know, and just to be standing there with him. And I didn't even have a name for the show yet. We kind of made up the name for the show during the interview. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And uh, we, yeah. you know, so that, that to me, the magic started and, and uh, there's so many great ones, man, but the Andrew WK one is great. And it's a whole different side of them. Every interview I've seen with him is like in character, you know, it's the Andrew WK persona, you know, all fired up. Yeah. And, and this is him. This is like Andrew, the person. And he reveals a lot of things that are, you know, they're, they're mind blowing to me. You know what I mean? It's just a whole different side of them. But I mean, that's where it started. But, uh, the uh, Doc Gallows, Luke Gallows, you know, who's now back in in WWE. Yeah, he's back in WWE now. I sat and recorded that interview at his house with him. You know what I mean? So like, uh, with a bunch of his friends and Amber Gallows and everybody sitting there and we're drinking Bud Light limes, you know, two sweeting each other and shit. <laughs> and like literally, like to me, Gallows is an awesome guy, you know. But the idea that I'm sitting there in his house, interviewing him, and then as soon as we're done, he's gonna interview me for talking shop on MLW, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, man, this is surreal. And, and he's hilarious, too. And again, me and him have a, a good chemistry. And, and we just chopped it up. Uh, Lars from Rancid, Lars Fredrickson, who also plays uh, in an amazing band called the Old, Old Firm Casuals, who have a, a new album out that just dropped. And uh, that, that one's amazing, too, because uh, I know Lars for a long time, but I had no idea about uh, like him growing up exclusively watching Detroit wrestling, you know what I mean? Even though he lives here in the Bay Area, San Francisco, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and uh, his story and his journey is a, a, a wild, a wild kid, so to speak, into, mm-hmm. you know, the awesome person and, and punk rock ninja that he is today. Um, yeah. 
that that's a great one. But I mean, that there's uh, when I look at it, man, like I love them all. They're like they're like my yeah. children. You know, there's some great video game ones. The the interview with the co-creator of the whole Earthworm, no, sorry, not Earthworm Jim, uh, Toe Jam and Earl series, like that one was really cool. Um, man, there's just a, a lot of a lot of great ones, man. Uh, man, I, I can't even. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, it's even... all. It's all. I knew when I asked that, I'd be like, you know, it's like you said, it's kind of like trying to trying to tell you what's your favorite kid. You know? But yeah, they're all. Uh, all every episode is available free for instant stream or download directly from kevingillshow.com. You can just scroll down and look at a, a picture and a description of every episode right there on the main page. And, uh, man, you know, I, I love bringing the, the icons of New York hardcore music. You know what I mean? Cause those guys don't do a lot of interviews or don't, don't appear necessarily in a lot of places and having bands like sick of it all, the Chromags, agnostic front H2O vision of disorder, you know, mad ball, all, uh, uh, Todd from the offspring, you know, like, uh, it's just, yeah. it's, it's just crazy to me, you know? Uh, so to me, and it's all my passions, you know, like that, uh, I love punk rock and hardcore music. Like that's my shit. I love the juggalo scene. So the violent J interview is one of our, our most popular, uh, episodes and the same thing. Everyone, a lot of people have a preformed opinion about insane clown posse. Like, Oh man, fuck those guys. Those guys fucking suck. Listen to violent yeah. J's interview on the Kevin Gill show. And then see what you think of him at the end of it. You know what I mean? Give him 60 minutes of your time. He's put up, yeah. he's put up over, you know, well over 20 years of his life into a, a self-made empire. You know what I mean? Him and him and Shaggy yeah, Tudo, man. man. So I think there's just a lot of cool stories out there to be told. Kevin Owens or Kevin Steen as he was when he recorded it. Uh, that's an all-time favorite of mine because I've been a Steen fan and supporter from the first time I ever saw him wrestle. And uh, I always knew, you know, he's the greatest. And, but, you know how it is. There was a different era when, when Steen was blowing up to start the era in wrestling was different and there, mm -hmm. there would never be someone uh, say of, of his size or his body type. You know what I mean? There was no such thing really as like someone who would wrestle in a shirt in WWE, right. you know, that, that, they weren't, they, they weren't acceptable of, of his look at that point. Right. That was, it, it literally was like not allowed, so to speak. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that it would wasn't. make him like, in other words, no, and that also, there was also the perception. I mean, Daniel Bryan is, I think, the guy that broke that that ceiling. But there was that whole uh, tier, and obviously CM Punk did too. But there was mm -hmm. that whole tier of guys, like the best wrestlers in the world, were CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, uh, and and on and on. You know what I mean? And and uh, and, yeah. and Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe, and and there was that whole crew, and they all got to rise up. You know. Uh, it's a beautiful thing when you look back just even only five years ago from where we are from then to now it, it, that a guy like him who is well-deserved. I'm talking about Owens is well-deserved. Oh, man. He's that. I mean, he's my favorite on their roster just from everything he does. He he does. Th dude, he gets in that ring and he's screaming at the top of his lungs while working a match. The average person has no clue how hard that is in mm -hmm, itself mm -hmm. to not get blown up while you're working a match and you're screaming at the top of your lungs at the audience and at your opponent. The entire time. And the you're entire not, time. And you're not just screaming oogie boogie or whatever. You're saying right. like quips and one line. You're like Spider-Man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a negative Spider-Man. <laughs> Dude, it's incredible. He's a, like, and I, I've tweeted that a, a ton of times like, you don't realize what you're seeing with this guy when he just does that simple thing. I mean, it's we say simple, scream and yell, but it's really not simple. And, 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 that, he, and, and that's why almost nobody can do it besides him. You know what I mean? And what I love yeah. about uh, Kevin Owens and, and his story is how um, other people saw greatness in him, too. And people like Steve Austin and early on and, and then The Rock all took an interest in him. Because he was that fucking damn good. And can you imagine how good you have to be for The Rock, who's like making movies and living on a whole other level, right. to be right. have your matches on Ring of Honor and Pro Wrestling Gorilla brought to The Rock's attention so then he's tweeting about you and <laughs> all that stuff. Dude, all, think about that. Yeah. As to, and of course, in addition to his stellar work on microphone, in ring, everywhere for Kevin Steen, Kevin Owens um, – getting those public endorsements and rubs repeatedly from people like Austin dude and fucking the rock helped just make him even more. Cause he was already the hottest guy. How many mainstream people are going to watch him for the first time because of those endorsements and then be like, 
oh shit. Right. You know, watch him versus Sammy fucking Zane. That's a guy I left out before in my description of guys who were the best wrestlers on the planet. You know what I mean? Right. He was yeah. one or AKA you will know, Sammy Zane, let's say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. No, it's 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 incredible, and I mean, it's it's good to see guys like that get get their opportunity now because they so deserving, so deserved. Amen, brother. They're the best. It's a yeah. it's a beautiful thing because there's an analogy in wrestling, and it's true ninety nine percent of the time, which is, um, you know, in in regular sports in baseball, if you're the best baseball player there is then you're the best. And it doesn't matter if the third base coach doesn't like you or if the GM thinks you're too short or too tall or whatever. Um, If you're the best, you're the best. And that's it in wrestling. You're subject to all these pitfalls and politics and things that can happen. So the best always don't get to be in the best position or booked like they're the best, but these guys are all uh, doing both. You know what I mean? They're, they're being used to the best of their abilities and they're shining like the stars that they are. So that that's a beautiful thing for wrestling. Yeah. And, and and that stuff keeps me tuned in. Like on Monday nights, I'll always watch every Kevin Owens segment. I'll watch the stuff with uh, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson and all that. And, yeah. you know, a couple Sami Zayn. You know, th- those are the segments I watch, you know. Yeah. Oh, me too. I, dude, I'm, I'm keyed into it, man. It's just it's good stuff. I mean, it, it actually just the whole the, the thing, seeing guys like that finally get their opportunity when years ago. It would have never happened. Means means everything to me as I watch it. I'm glad that I'm glad to see it because they're deserving. Um, hey, how, how um seriously though? How great just in general is the wrestling scene today? With now, I'm not talking about just a national stage. Of course, indies as well. Like there's so many good indies now, and it wasn't like that 15 years ago. No, definitely the the last several <laughs> years. Like I said, I think it's like the last five. It's it's just created this insane boom. You know, like. Uh, the rise of New Japan, I, I think, is a critical part of it because New Japan a few years ago just began fully crossing over in a really big way with the Bullet Club and everything. And you'd go yeah, to WrestleMania man. and there'd be more Bullet Club shirts than John Cena shirts and madness like that, you know. Yeah, and yeah. that that's a huge part of it. All the great indies out there, coast to coast. And it's it's indies that run consistently, that bring in top names, that bring big crowds like that's a credit to the business. And it keeps the business going, you know, then there's people that take it a step further and, you know, they're doing live pay-per-views and they're putting out DVD or digital or Blu-ray content, you know, that takes it to yeah. another level. Cause then you can take your stars and help make them stars in, in other places, you know, and then you got gorilla and you got AIW, you know, out here in California, there's a, a ton, you know, pro wrestling revolution, all pro wrestling, uh, fist combat in Santa Cruz, uh, Gold Rush Pro Wrestling in uh, in Pacifica, uh, Underground Wrestling Alliance in San Jose. I mean, it, it goes on and on. And and again, that's California, but there, there's all over the country, all over the world. And then, of course, you can't overlook Lucha Underground. You can't overlook Ring of Honor. You can't overlook NXT. And just look at that. Think of how many people are, are getting work and how many people they're getting to oh, really yeah, get yeah. the best of the best of the best. Because there's so many systems up and running, and and everybody shits on TNA all day, but TNA is, is a place. There's a lot of great people work there. You know what I mean? And, and people have good matches there. You know what I mean? It's it's it, yeah, it's unfortunate yeah, yeah. that TNA is, is in the position that it is, and I hope something changes within their infrastructure that allows them to to make moves. You know, I think there's been a lot of missteps, and uh, they, yeah, but they've turned yeah. around and been making good TV and stuff, and. You know, uh, I, I just wish him well. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of great talent there, man. I, I wish him nothing, nothing but the best. I actually uh, was uh, talking to Aiden O'Shea. Uh, he's been on the show, and Aiden O'Shea was, uh, you know, we, we were talking about TNA. I mean, they're doing good, they're, they're doing good things, man. It's just, it's just, uh, I, I, I'm hoping they weather the storm. I really am because uh, one of the things I, I've said, and I've tweeted this out a bunch of times on our Facebook page and Twitter, man. The thing is, if you're a wrestling fan today and you there's and you don't like say WWE, there's a million options. <laughs> right, it hasn't always right. been that way. So like there's if you don't like WWE, well there's go look at ROH, go look at Lucha Underground, look look at TNA, go look at some of the indies. There's there's more access to good wrestling now than you could have ever imagined. You know, 15 years ago when WCW folded, ECW folded, and you only had WWE that was sitting there. So I mean, you have a choice now. 
So if you're a wrestling yeah. fan and complaining, I don't know why you're complaining. No, it's like a- it, it, and, there's something to like. You and, know? and there's the the promoters that are bringing in people. They're bringing in dream matches. They're putting, you know, people like Pro right. Wrestling Gorilla and others are uh, making these amazing dream matches happen. You know, we're on the East Coast. You got uh, Cole Cabana versus Damian Sandow for, I think that's for WrestlePro or out here in Cali, like in whatever, depending on when this airs, but uh, was it like June 7th or something in uh, in Merced? I'm, I'm going to be doing commentary on Pentagon Jr. versus Brian, K- or no, versus Jeff Cobb. You know, hashtag he's a monster. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that's going down for Fighting Spirit of Pro. But I mean, think about that. There's not just shows happening. There's right. like talent going places. You know what I mean? There's guys like Joey Ryan and the Young Bucks and everybody's out there doing their thing and then there's you know new teams rising up and, and and teams and talents and 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 then there's the female scene the women's wrestling scene which is booming oh, too yes yes it's on that's a that's an on that's a whole we we could you and i can have a 30 minute discussion on that just in general with the, the women these days i mean they are wrestlers they are they, they're not i mean we differentiate them and we call them women's wrestlers just so people can know what we're talking about but right they, they, the they're work wrestlers that they're doing, right they are incredible professional wrestlers. They, you know what I mean? They are professional wrestlers through and through. I mean, just great. And I, I Bailey, think, Sasha. Oh my God. And I always think the girls have it harder. You know what I mean? Have it way harder than the guys. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They do. But it's, it, it's some good stuff, man. It, this pro wrestling scene in general. Um, well, Kevin, man, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, man. I really, I really enjoyed talking to you, man. I, I, I'm gonna give you a few minutes, man, before we start wrapping up, man. I want you to plug everything, whether that's your Twitter, Facebook, you know, KevinGillShow.com, uh, Pro Wrestling Tees, whatever you got to plug, man. Go ahead, and, uh, <laughs> go ahead and get it all in, man. Get all your shit in, you know. You sure. Know what I'm well, I appreciate your time, man. It's been cool to chop it up with you here today, and uh, I invite everyone to just go to KevinGillShow.com. G I L L, you know, Kevin Gill show.com every episode stream or download. There's links to subscribe and, and leave reviews, which is really important to the growth of the show. So please leave a review if you like what you hear and uh dignified bastard.com is my site. There's tons of uh, like New York hardcore records that I reissue and video games I've worked on. And there's also Kevin Gill show merchandise there. Pro wrestling tees.com. I think it's backslash Kevin Gill show or backslash Kevin Gill. But I got a bunch of designs up there. A bunch of them are exclusive. There's a bunch of designs at Dignified Bastard. Uh, every other Thursday, I'm on psychopathicradio.com with Jump Steady, the Rude Boy, and Natalie, the Ring Girl, putting it down for uh, the psychopathic universe. But the same thing, it, it's a show. It's just an interesting show. We have different topics every week. We play underground music. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I'm on Twitter. I'm interactive. Holler at me, at OG Kevin Gill and at Kevin Gill Show. I even got Facebook like pages, motherfucker. <laughs> at uh, KG Kevin Gill and Kevin Gill show, and uh, and I think that's my exhaustive uh, list of plugs. <laughs> I probably even forgot something, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, I, it's it's real easy to do, isn't it? When you when you're trying to go through everything, and you're trying to plug everything that you got going on, but uh, and of course, nah, I'm also on uh, you know Stitcher, iTunes, SoundCloud, all that. But I just make it easy for everybody too. It's all right on my site. Yeah, you can get it. I, I know exactly what you mean by that. Well, man, I, dude, uh, hang tight with me real quick while I stop this thing, but because uh, I got just want to shoot something, tell you something offline. But uh, man, I really, uh, really appreciate you doing the show, man. And uh, hey, we'll, we'll bring you back sometime, man. If you uh, if you enjoyed it, man, I'd love to have you on again uh, sometime in the future. Who knows when? But uh, we definitely can make it happen, man. I, I've, I've really enjoyed it and and like I said, man, been a fan of your show. Love what you do. Love how you do it. All that good stuff is different, and that's that's a great thing. Great. Well, thanks so much, brother. It's an honor. And thanks for inviting me, and, and sorry that I missed the fucking uh, message for like six months or whatever. But I'm glad <laughs> we got to do it today. Dude, that was crazy. No, I, you ain't got to worry about that because what happens, man, is uh, I get – I I do this. I always tell our listeners, hey, I'll follow you back. So I follow our listeners back. And some of them have these auto DMs that shoot at you. I'm like, God damn it. What is with the auto DMs? So I miss I miss DMs, man. So it's cool, dude. It's it's, it's quite all right. I, I completely understand <laughs> missing and, the best. And the what's message, cool man. about it is, is that because, um, I, I, you know, you wrote it a long time ago. And then you even were like, oh, it's cool. If you don't have time, I'll still support your show or whatever. And then you never heard from me. So in your mind, it might as well be like, oh, he just faved me or whatever. But then I saw you tweet something and I was like, oh, I want to send this dude a message. And then I press, I open the window and then it's like, here's a message from November. 
And I'm like, oh, fuck. But what I love <laughs> is that so it's whatever it is seven months later and you're still putting over the show, even though I presumably faved you completely. Didn't even say no, thank you. Or I'm not doing interviews right now. Just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But if you would have got sour over that, then this interview would have never happened. And meanwhile, there was no fabing. You know what I mean? It was a, right. a cyber fabe. <laughs> yeah. Dude, uh, yeah, that's why I was like, nah, man, it's cool, man. Ain't no big deal. Well, I tell, dude, I tell, I mean, like, you know, guys are apprehensive about doing a podcast. And, and the part, part of the problem is there's there's too many now. Sure. There's just, it, I mean, I hate to say it like that, um, but there's just a lot of podcasts that aren't. And, and we try to do things a little different. Like, I do an interview segment, but I also do a segment where, do we talk and just have buttloads and of fun. I mean, it's just, we curse our asses off and we just we we talk about the current product we don't put it down but we just like to have fun and it's kind of comedy but at the same time it's it's just three guys having fun it's me my buddy doc who i was talking about who uh came in and was like dude you got to listen to fucking teddy Hawk right now. <laughs> him and uh and him and it's uh and it's him and one of luke hawk's guys out of wildcat sports uh hard body harper he actually he works for luke and uh, he's been with luke since the beginning since they started five years ago almost so it's the three of us and we cut up we have a good time so that's kind of the uniqueness of our portion that we do so uh no man i, I believe me i understand man it, it's it's cool dude it's uh i'm dude i'm glad you came on man it was it was fun man it was cool talking to you and uh, everybody listening kevin runs it he runs a outstanding podcast that his audio quality is superb what i mean by that is very professional kevin does a lot you know i don't have the luxury of being able to do a lot in person hardly any dude yours you do in person generally everyone the audio quality everyone. is outstanding so people who are listening to this right now just on kevin gill's audio quality you will be impressed from the start yeah so i'm gonna tell you that right i now. feel like it, it puts the listener in the room like that that's a big it part does. of the experience like it, it feels like you know you're the third person you're sitting there when, yeah when yeah it's, when it's me and Brian Cage or me and uh, whoever it is, man, you're there too. Like you're in on the conversation and it's right in your ears. You know what I mean? So it, 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 I really think that takes it to the next level. And, you know, there's been an interview here or there where, uh, you know, it couldn't happen because I could, I can't not do it in person. You know, my, right. my standard go-to line is like, look, if Vince McMahon was like, listen, KG, I'll do this shit, but I'm just straight up not doing it in person. I'll do the phone with Vince McMahon, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> Out of all due respect, you know what I mean? But I feel like right. everyone else, hey, it's part of the it's part of the show and I'll come to you. I'll make it easy as fuck. Yeah, yeah. And you know what, dude? You do a good job at it. You you really do. Hey, it does, and, like I and said, one thing quality I is awesome. One oh thank you, brother. One thing I wanted to say too is uh let's not forget Juggalo Championship Wrestling. Juggalo Championship Most, yeah. Wrestling is the you know wrestling promotion of Insane Clown Posse. Um, I'm very fortunate to be the voice of Juggalo Championship Wrestling, so I do live commentary alongside uh, Violent J and Shaggy Two Dope, the team that originally inspired me to be com uh, in commentary, the Stranglemania team, and uh, we do live commentary over the PA. It's an amazing e experience in terms of uh, comedic stuff as well as the r type of wrestling commentary that gets you hype, you know. And we just have an insane roster of, of wrestling and wrestlers. And uh, we got two mind-blowing shows coming to the Gathering of the Juggalos this July. It's going down. Uh, check out JuggaloGathering.com. I think it's the 17th through the 23rd or the 19th. Whatever it is, it's the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday uh, that ends on the 23rd. But it's going to be amazing. You're going to have your mind blown. They're about to announce all the wrestling superstars that are appearing on the infomercial, which is just about to drop so I uh, invite and encourage everyone to peep that out. And to go back real quick to what we were saying about you hitting me up and me missing the message and you still just keeping with the flow. And then, oh, yeah. then we connected. You have no idea. I've had people completely lose their shit to where it's like I can't even like have this person on my Facebook or whatever anymore. You know what I mean? Because of their message went into my filtered inbox within the message requests <laughs> oh, inbox which God. i didn't even know existed until a few weeks ago you know what i mean oh, and it's man. like yeah people can't take things personally period and two uh don't be annoying but it's okay to follow up too you know what i mean because sometimes stuff does fall through the cracks but oh yeah right, but right. it's just the right the attitude of gratitude you know what i mean always remember yeah. to to everybody not just from me to you but from you to the world or vice versa nobody owes anybody anything you know what i mean anything anybody yeah. does or you know what i mean it's like it's all up to them so i'm very respectful of of people's boundaries and and spaces and 
you know, there's probably more interviews I could get if I was a little more like, hey, so what do you think, bro? What do you think? Oh, I got my shit right here. What do you think? But I want people to want to do it. You know what I mean? And I want yeah, it to yeah. be. I don't want it to be like, oh, God, here comes this guy. Let's fucking get the fuck out of here. Mr. Dude, you 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 <laughs> nailed it. I, that's why I tell guys that. I'm like, hey, man, if you want to do it, great. If not, no worries. I'm still support you. And I mean that 100 percent. I mean, that. well, you see it. I mean, it 100 percent. I mean, what? Six months later, I'm retweeting out your your episode. Um, I'm like, man, y'all got it. Y'all got to check him out. Oh, brother. Yeah, I mean, oh, we, you know, I, I, I'm like, serious. I, I re- that's the type of guy I am, man. I don't, I don't you know, I don't know. Oh, not want to do that. And you just reminded deals, me you know? too, uh, two amazing, amazing episodes that if people were going to listen to the Kevin Gill show for the first time, uh, there's a three part interview with Sean X Pac Waltman sat. We sat down for one marathon session and made it three separate full length episodes. And it's, it's fucking amazing. That's definitely a highlight of the, of the whole thing. And there's also a two-parter with MVP, and you know everybody's heard MVP on Cole Cabana and uh, and a few other places, and he's an amazing interview. He rarely does interviews, but we 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 take it to to, to eh, we take it to totally other places than those interviews did, and we also get way deep in the punk rock hardcore stuff, which a lot of people don't know that MVP is super into, and now we put a band together, and all kinds of shit is happening. So there's there's just a lot of great another great one that would blow people's minds. Uh, is the Joey Ryan episode. The Joey Ryan episode contains more wrestling knowledge for both fans and wrestlers and people who are, uh, you know, study to be students of the game. Uh, just an amazing, amazing interview from a super intelligent uh, and super articulate guy, you know? And then, of course, yeah. the Cole Cabana episode. You know what I mean? Having the, the godfather of podcasting, the same thing. He only appears on giant podcasts that are, outside of wrestling. Do you know what I mean? He'll be on like, yeah. uh, you know what I'm saying? All the top comedy ones. All, he's on Mark Marin and shit. You know what I mean? But he, yeah, yeah, he yeah. did my podcast. You know what I mean? So that, that's like a, that's him doing me a favor. You know what I mean? So yeah, absolutely. But it, it's, absolutely. A, it's a good listen. You know what I mean? But oh well, yeah, all the shit's just popping into my head here. Yeah, that, that's, that's how it always happens. Man. I actually, man, I, I, I love listening to MVP, man. He's a, he's just a, he seems like a real good dude, man. Uh, down to earth. Uh, I could I could listen to that guy, man. He he turned me on to uh, you know I don't live in California obviously, but uh, he turned me on to check out a uh, Hood Slam a while back. Word. And, uh, I was listening to a podcast that he was doing. I can't remember which one, but uh, he turned me on to them, man. I've actually had a bunch of them on my show, and uh, we, we, man, they, they they do some good things, different unique things out there, man. So again, uh, whatever your flavor is, man, if that's uh, if that's what fit fl- you know floats your boat, man, you go with it. You know right, I mean? and th- that's the cool thing about wrestling is you know there's people that do. Um you know, super pure pro wrestling, like pro wrestling, like yeah. it used to be mixed with strong style from Japan. There's people that do, you know, more character based or over the top fun stuff. You know what I mean? There's right. people that do crossover stuff. There's people that do super violent stuff. There's people that do all women. There's people, you know what I mean? And that's yeah, the beauty yeah, of it. Like yeah. you said, there's such a variety of products to support and, you know, support is what makes it all work without the fans. You know, if, if wrestling was just left to, the people that bootleg shit online and complain about everything online because they're basically the same crowd. They're never the people that buy the t-shirt. They're never the people that show up and buy a ticket. So fuck them. You know what I mean? It's up to the people that if you like it, you know what I mean? Instead of spending money with Nike or with Starbucks or with McDonald's, spend your money or at Walmart, (laughs) spend it where it goes the furthest. And it, it it's vital because without those ticket sales, you know, the, the people who buy advanced tickets, to independent wrestling are literally like the most important people in the the subculture or whatever or in the audience you know who on that side of the railing people who buy that's advanced sure. tickets that's something that's really spoken on but you got me open it today on, on a myriad of topics my man <laughs> hey no man hey look dude i could i could i could go on forever you know you were talking about the different things and real quick as we're wrapping up uh you know who aj kirsch is with a uh, hood slam mm-hmm he was he, he well I don't know if he coined this phrase but he said it best to me I had him on my show and he was like uh he's like man it's just different genres of wrestling it's kind of like movies you know you got horror movies you got comedy you got dramas he's like it's just wrestling nowadays you got these different genres you know you got lucha you got hood slam you know you, you, you just got all these different genres, and honestly, that's probably the best way I've heard it. You know, I don't know if he created that, but you know, full disclosure, he he said it on my show, so that was the first time I ever heard it. Um, 
but yeah, so yeah, we're we're talking about a number of different times. But look, man, Kevin, I'm a I'm a I'm gonna hit the stop button in a second. But man, I appreciate you doing this so much. You have no clue, man, how how appreciative I am of uh of you doing the show today and uh bringing your knowledge on and plugging your stuff and uh just so glad to have you on as a guest as somebody who I see is having a very very successful show. Oh well, thank you, brother. Again, and shout out to everybody who listens to your show and everybody who supports independent wrestling, man. Holler at me. <laughs> Get at me, dog. I'm available for commentary. <laughs> Thanks again, Kevin Gill, for joining me on Booking the Territory Pro Wrestling Podcast a few months back, June of 2016, man. It was really a pleasure talking to you. You are welcome back every time. And like I said, everyone listening to this episode, appreciate you checking it out. We appreciate you listening to us. And check out below the links below in the description of the episode. There's all of our audio links there, our Pro Wrestling Tea store. And, hey, if you want to help the show out, you can also send us a donation. Use our Amazon referral link that's in the description below as well uh, if you are shopping on Amazon. It's just a way of showing your appreciation to the show. Otherwise, man, again, thanks again, Kevin. We'd love to have you back anytime. We hope you enjoyed this week's YouTube episode of Booking the Territory Pro Wrestling Podcast. Thanks again, everyone.